Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani, and welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism, narcissistic abuse, toxic people, toxic relationships. My hope is that you find the answer to many of the questions you have about these issues on this channel. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button and join this wonderful community. And you can also turn on the notifications and be told every time we put out a new video, which is daily. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up because that definitely helps this video get wider reach and more people then learn about toxic people. So <clears throat> today's video, today's video takes on a question, which is, and a question that comes up all the time with people who are co-parenting, either they're still in the relationship or they're not. But here's a question. Why can't I tell my children how badly their narcissistic co-parent treats me? That's the question. It keeps coming up over and over again. So let's talk about that. So a lot of people say, why can't I ask them? Why can't I tell them? I need them to know. Now, the standing wisdom when it comes to co-parenting with a narcissist is that you do not speak badly about any a, a other co, uh, another parent to the children. And really, it is standing wisdom for any parenting, right? It's not good for your children to hear it. In extreme cases, obviously, violence, danger, your singular focus at that point is to get your children to safety. That's a different kind of a situation, right? Now, <clears throat> now the corollary to this is that you also do not have to paint a grandiose, fluffy picture that is a lie about the narcissist to your children. You don't need to say that they are wonderful or a hero or that they have to respect them. You should also not gaslight your children. Oh, your mom or your dad, they don't mean those things when they say they're angry or they don't really mean to yell at us. Mm, that's not a good idea either. So I'm actually asking you to walk on an impossible tightrope that's made of barbed wire. Okay, I can't speak badly about them. I have to be present with my children. I'm being narcissistically abused and I have to keep it together. And I can't gaslight my children either. It feels impossible. In many ways, it is impossible. And it feels ingenuine and inauthentic too. I absolutely get it. I really do. It, it, it's an impossible ask. But the issue that often arises, especially when there are situations such as infidelity or other betrayals, just really bad behavior in the relationship, it's that it's quite amazing how a narcissistic co-parent can take their mask on and off they can cheat on, lie, invalidate, and emotionally abuse a spouse or partner, the co-parent to their children, but then turn around and be an ingratiating parent, especially for short bursts. Coach the teams, make silly faces, be larger than life. That combination actually makes the cognitive dissonance so much worse because you may see children who may actually enjoy being with their narcissistic co-parent, but the relationship or the marriage is breaking your soul. Now, this is not always the case. And in just as many cases, the narcissistic co-parent is as bad and abusive and awful a co-parent as they are a spouse or a partner. Now, in these situations, the enablers are also in full force because if the enablers see the funny, silly, playful parent, they will criticize you if you think about wanting to get out and the toll it will take on your children. In many cases, trust me, your children notice. They notice that they are being treated well by the narcissistic parent or having fun with them and that their other parent isn't. In the worst scenarios, the child starts to resent the unhappy parent who is being narcissistically abused and can't figure out why they can't be happy and <clears throat> why they can't be happy and fun like the cheerful narcissistic parent. But in most scenarios, the child may have their own dissonance and guilt over having fun with a parent who is not always good or doesn't always treat their other parent well. This may leave the child feeling like they have to have split allegiances, a sense of guilt, of shame, and of wanting to protect the narcissistically abused parent while also simultaneously trying to stay on the good side of the narcissistic parent. 
Even if the narcissistic parent is playful and fun and funny and theme parky and let's go do some cool thing and all of that, no narcissistic parent is ever always going to hit their marks. And it's one of those situations that when the narcissistic parent is on, they are on. And it's like the sun shines only on those children at those times. But when the narcissistic co-parent is distracted by their own stuff and their issues and their insecurity, and they will be distracted by their own stuff, they can be distracted, inattentive, or even irritable at being interrupted. So the child may also internalize a sense of having to be good so as to keep the good parent around and anxious about the narcissistic parent disappearing and craving those wonderful and fleeting moments. But where does that leave you as the co-parent, especially if there are some big ticket stuff like cheating happening? It can feel awful to see the other parent seen as a hero when they are actually harming the child by harming the other parent. We really do need to see it that way. The way the narcissistic co-parent treats the other parent in the relationship is not independent of the children. To harm a child's other parent is also harming the child. So if after hearing all of this, you're saying, hey, yo, Dr. Romani, stick to the question. Why can't I let my kid know that their Disneyland mask wearing parent who is fun and funny and silly and takes them to do such fun things is actually an immoral, unethical, awful, psychologically abusive person? Well, my answer is not an easy one. First of all, you, I really want you to ask yourself, why do you want your children to know this? People have told me that they want their children to know what the co-parent is about so they don't think that their parents' behavior is acceptable or so they will take my side or support me because I desperately need it or say the, so they will understand better if we do get a divorce or I want them to see the different masks that their narcissistic parent wears. Or so that the other parent doesn't get ahead of me and start talking badly about me. And with a narcissistic co-parent, that's going to happen anyhow. They probably already are talking badly about you. You piling on to the negative talk too makes you look as bad or as confusing as your narcissistic co-parent to the kids. Giving children information or situations or images that they cannot yet fully process is in, isn't okay. We never want to put a child in a position where they have to choose sides, least of all between parents. Listen, lots of children pick up on their parents' narcissism, especially when they get to middle school and older, and especially when there's less fun and more of the angry invalidation patterns. And it's a terrible legacy for a child. But learning that their parent is a narcissist will not make that legacy any different. The abuse is the abuse. What's more important is that they do know that when their parent's behavior flares up, it's not their responsibility or that they did not cause it. And I understand in every cell of my body why you want the children to know. But the long game is to not weigh your children down with this stuff. Even in adulthood, when we see the narcissistic people around us get away with it, get away with everything, it feels awful. We want to say, hey, what are you doing? Why are you supporting them? They are a narcissist. But we can't win at that. With children, it's a lot more complicated. Again, it's walking that razor's edge of being a good parent while being in a terrible relationship and not speak badly of the other parent, but also not gaslight your children and not making promises to them that their other parent is going to change or be less angry or that their other parent is just having a bad day or that they have to just completely blindly respect a parent even when they're behaving badly. I wish so much that I could really confidently give all of you the reassurance that someday all of your children coming out of narcissistically abusive relationships will see it clearly, that they will see the damage the narcissistic parent did to you, that they will see the narcissistic parent for who they are. Unfortunately, the best answer I can give you there is sometimes yes, sometimes no. And frankly, there's little rhyme or reason to it. Some of it is an interaction between the child and the parent. Golden children 
who may have temperaments that are well matched to the narcissistic parent may go through life viewing you as the problem, which is devastating, especially when you're trying to protect them from everything. In some cases, the narcissistic parent succeeds in spinning a narrative about you that is damaging or even deceitful. In some cases, the narcissistic parent will buy them off and the power of that really starts showing in middle school, into adolescence, and young adulthood. In other cases, because the narcissistically abused parent may appear anxious or sad or distracted by the trauma of the abuse, the narcissistic parent can step in and paint a picture of the abused parent as ineffectual and not present. None of this is fair. None of this is right. But all of it is potentially possible. In the best cases, your children see it. And as they get older, they craft a deeper relationship with you. You will still have to live with the grief and pain seeing what the narcissistic parent did to your children's mental health. But in the best cases, the children do their best to create some sort of well boundaried space with the narcissistic parent or distance themselves or go no contact and see you clearly. As I said, there is not much rhyme or reason to this. As adults, they may ask you about it and you can unfold that story in a way that accounts for what they do and don't want to hear. Even as adults, they may not want the whole story. Some people may even seek out therapy with alongside at the same time with the same therapist with their adult children to have these conversations. You telling them about the other parent doesn't stop any of these difficult things from happening. In fact, it may make it more likely. Again, it's the impossible tightrope of being the best parent you can be. Get the support and help you need. Don't gaslight your kids. At the same time, though, have the restraint to not speak badly about the other parent and get through the days. I know how tempting it is to say, look at what your parent is doing. But more often than not, it won't go the way you want. It could blow up in your face, but more than anything, it is not good for your children. Co-parenting with a narcissist is unforgiving, it is unfair, it is unkind, and it is brutal. And, and many times you'll feel like, what is the right path forward? You want to protect your kids as much as possible. Sometimes it lands exactly where you want, and sometimes it doesn't. Thanks again.